Hey there, got a question for you. You're considering a portrait session, right? Have you thought much about your location? Like where you're gonna shoot? Have you considered a studio? Are you gonna go somewhere? Do you even know how to decide which one you wanna do? I'm Mike with Mike Latzer Photography, and I'm gonna walk you through 10 items or questions that'll help you figure out which might be better for your session, okay? So number one, is the background critical? By this, I mean, do you need an authentic forest or cityscape or something like that? Or can it just be a simple backdrop? Can it just be, you know, a painted wall? Uh, if it's something like that, it could help you decide what you want to do. On location, obviously gives you the more authentic background. And for a studio, you can get away with just a simple white backdrop, black, something like that, or depending on the studio, they may have various different kinds of backgrounds just there. Some, something to consider. Number two, do you need a lot of locations quickly or in just one session? If you need to bounce around a lot and you're limited for time, budget, what have you, and all your photos have to be taken in one day, you might consider doing on location type shooting, which is so you can go from the park to the city, to the neighborhoods, to the beach, or whatever crazy combination you need, and you can just go back to back to back to back to back and keep going. If you use a studio, you're gonna have to get new backdrops, rebuild all the props, all the layouts, and that can be really time consuming. So whether or not, you know, it looks better to do it that way or drive places, it depends on where you live, where you're shooting, and all of that, but if you need to go through a lot of locations quickly, or a lot of backgrounds quickly, you may want to consider going on location. Okay, number three. Do you have a rigid deadline for when these photos have to be delivered? I've had a lot of sessions in my career get canceled or rescheduled because the weather wasn't cooperating, or there was something going on, like an event at the location we were supposed to be shooting at. Um, any kind of we'll call it acts of God, mother nature, what have you, that just happen and totally throw off your ability to take the photos when you need to. So if you absolutely have to have the photos taken by a certain time, so you know they will be delivered by a certain date, you'll probably want to go with the studio. Okay. All right. Number four, what's the prop situation? Do you have big Jagunda props? Like, do you need to take pictures on a boat? Or is it just, you know, some couple of small things like a computer or a mug or your anything like that? I skipped the third item. Something. A notebook. We'll go with a notebook. It doesn't matter. Something small. If it's something like that, you know, you can go anywhere you need to. You can shoot in studio. No big deal. But if you need something that's like a boat, like I said, you're probably going to have to shoot on location because um, you're not going to fit a big old 23-foot sailboat in your average studio. It's just not gonna happen, okay? All right, number five, are your outfits fragile? Okay, this is really big for, you know, uh, boutique, fashion design, prototype model type stuff. Um, if you've got an outfit or a prop that's like, if you breathe on it wrong, it's going to break, probably wanna consider shooting in a studio just to minimize the variables and all the random things that could happen to that piece. Okay, if it's something that you can beat up a little bit, okay, you don't mind going on location. You can go hiking in it if you really wanted to. Could be fun. That would be fun. Do a nice pretty dress in the woods. I'll have to consider that one. Okay, moving on. Number six is, will you need to change clothes during your session frequently? If you have a lot of outfit changes, a studio is really handy because they always have spare changing rooms or bathrooms right there. Okay, so it's just one, two, three, in and out. You've got places to sit, you've got places to hang things. It's really easy. Whereas if you're shooting on location, it can get kind of squirrely. You're either changing in your car, you're buying a coffee from a Starbucks so they'll allow you to use their bathroom to change and any kind of random thing like that, and you have to figure out like what outfits you can wear so you can change them easily. It takes a lot of planning and a lot of forethought. So it's not out of the question to do it on location. It's just a little more involved, and you may have to be okay with not being shy in certain regards. But again, I can help you plan that so that you're not getting naked in front of a lot of people. 
won't let that happen. No, no. Um, okay, so next we've got number seven. Seven? Yeah, seven. Is, uh, do you have weather requirements? Most shoots want good weather, as in no rain or precipitation, uh, but that's not always possible, especially if you're shooting on location. You know, if we've got tight deadlines and it starts raining that day or it's cloudy and you need sun, it kind of puts you in a hole, right? Whereas in a studio, you know what you're going to get. You know it's consistent. There's no variables to worry about. And the other benefit, you have air conditioning. Being in Atlanta in the summer, I I will gladly shoot where my clients want to shoot, but when they say they want to shoot outside in the middle of June, whew, oh boy, that's not fun. So I like AC. Studios are nice when you have AC, but overall, if you need to have a certain type of weather or look, you can replicate overcast, you can replicate sun, you can replicate rain uh, in a studio. So you might want to consider that. Okay. And, oh, here's another great one. Number eight is that does your session need to be private? Uh, this doesn't mean like you're doing anything scandalous like a boudoir session. It could just be something as simple as you're, you know, part of a company that's got a novel technology or a novel item that you just don't want people to see you photographing or working with. Uh, if it's something that's going to change the market, you've got intellectual property around it and you're like hiding off for the big reveal, you're going to want a studio. You're going to want a closed space so that you don't have peeking eyes coming in. Or if you're just shy and don't like, you know, people watching you while you're getting your picture taken, a studio is going to be really handy for that or a super remote part of the world. We'll go to Everest. Yeah, be great. <laughs> Okay, next one is number nine. Uh -uh. What kind of lighting do you need? Does it have to be anything complicated or is it something as simple as I just need decent sunlight, right? Uh, if you need like a lot of flashes, a lot of stuff going on, it's really difficult to do that on location. It's totally possible. It just, it takes a lot more work. Um, there's just a lot more equipment needed. There's gonna be a lot more assistance. Like I can do a full-fledged crazy like six light set up in a studio by myself, no problem. On location, not as easy and it's a lot harder to pull that off. Also, various locations will require you to pay uh, to have more studio equipment up there. Uh, there's cities in Alpha, in Al around Atlanta, I'm sorry, like uh, Sandy Springs, Roswell, uh, Cobb, where, you know, if you show up just your camera and you're shooting natural light, there's no permit required. It's pretty easy, straightforward. But as soon as you bring out some light stands and more robust equipment, that's when you got to start coughing up some money because they consider it a full production. Uh, so it's just something to consider. Whereas if you're in a studio, it doesn't matter. You can throw up lights. You don't. Sometimes you don't need lights because some of them are natural light studios, which have fantastic lighting already there, which is really nice. So again, if you need complex lighting or something like that, you may want to consider a studio unless other factors require it be on location. Okay, and then finally, and this is the big one, what's your budget? Do you have the dollars to spend? Because on location, mostly, it's free. You just show up and shoot. Maybe you pay for parking, no big deal. Uh, whereas a studio, you're going to have to pay the rental fee. And uh, most studios, they either charge hourly with a minimum of like two or three hours, or they only book in half or full day sessions. So... Yeah, just something to consider because that's going to be on top of your fees that you pay for your photographer, right? And again, just to be totally clear, there are certain locations that you do have to pay permit fees for. I know like the Swan House uh, in Atlanta over here, which is great for engagement shoots and weddings and some really nice portrait sessions. I think it's like $500 for an hour uh, as a permit. So just something to be considerate of. Um, if you don't know if any locations require a permit, don't worry. I'll help you find out all that information and, uh, help you narrow down the process. And I, that actually goes for your session in general. So I've walked through 10 questions to ask yourself to help figure out if you're going to want to shoot on location or in a studio. If you're having trouble, don't worry about it. I'm happy to help you figure that out. Uh, it's usually just, I have enough experience that I can say, yeah, pretty easily off the bat 
this is going to be a lot better for studio versus on location. But that's me. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you found out plenty of information from this. I actually do have a series of blog posts on this that are incredibly informative. I'll attach the link to this post so that you can do some more research on your own and hopefully have a great idea of where you want to do your next portrait session. In the meantime, I'm Mike with Mike Glatzer Photography. Talk soon.